Hey everybody, welcome back. I've been finishing up a few rainy day telescope projects lately, more like rainy month than rainy day actually, but that's all right. When the clouds finally part, I'll be ready for it. My gear's gonna be better than ever. Today, I wanted to talk to you about building custom length cables for EQ mod, specifically USB serial EQ direct cables. For any of you using the EQ ASCOM mount control driver for Skywatcher style mounts or wanting to use it rather than the hand controller, this could be the video for you. If it does end up helping you, or if you find it interesting, please consider liking the video and also subscribing to this channel so we can get this information in front of others who may have similar needs. Likes, subscribes, views, click-throughs, it's all part of YouTube's algorithm that determine how videos get recommended to others. So your clicks can really help people out, or I guess we can keep letting them watch cat videos. To build this, we're going to need a very specific type of USB serial TTL RS-232 5-volt cable from Amazon or another supplier. I'll of course link that and any other tools and parts I use to complete this project in the description below. The goal is to be able to build your own cut-to-length cables to avoid cable snag problems that could occur with longer off-the-shelf cables. Remember, these cables are something you could purchase rather than build. Building will cut your costs in about half, and it'll give you much more flexibility for you to decide on what length you actually need. Now, let's take a look at a typical application. Here's a Skywatcher AZ GTI with a Sharp Star 61 EDPH II telescope kit mounted on top. As you can see, a six foot cable is way too long. And you know, there's options like coiling the cable and things like that. I want to avoid cable snags and prefer a neater overall package. To determine the cable length in this case, I'll run the cable from the USB port to the connection point, which is labeled hand controller. While this is the length we need while in a park position, what about if the mount has rotated around declination or right ascension or both? So we can loosen both of the clutches and just see, you know, kind of what our worst case scenarios are. And I think that's about it. It looks like we'll need an extra couple inches on top of what we needed for uh, the park position. All right, great. We have the wire lengths figured out. Let's go inside and put them together. Okay, so we can get started. So first things first, let's get our work area ready. And that means getting some tools together. Now I uh, purchased this kit of tools specifically because it came as one set um, that had most of the components you may need if you already have the tools. Feel free to use what you have. Uh, you may already have better tools. I already have better tools, but you know I'm trying to make this uh, project work in such a way that you'll feel comfortable that you can repeat what I'm doing here. So this particular kit had a pair of crimpers. Uh, they'll do RJ45 and RJ12, so that'll cover my AZ GTI mount as well as my HEQ5. It comes with some uh, end covers. I may or may not use these. I actually may use some heat shrink. Um, so heat shrink comes in various sizes, so we may actually use that. And if I use heat shrink, you can either use a heat gun or a butane torch, whatever you're comfortable with. And neither of those um, are required, so uh, you won't have to do that. I just like clean cabling. This particular kit also came with some RJ45 ends um, and a, a stripper punch down tool that we can use. Um, and we may or may not actually use this tool. So uh, let's just leave these in here for now. The other tool I've mentioned several times is a good wire stripper. Um, this is fantastic. I don't know how I've done all my electrical projects for years without knowing about one of these. Um, so it's something to consider. So let's go ahead and uh, open our tools here. Just dispose of that. Um, if you're not familiar with crimpers, so there's a spot for the RJ45, a spot for the RJ12 um, uh, here. There is a stripper. There are some cutters um, that are here. And this particular style will also um, cut pass-through. Um, uh, ends and pass-through ends can be pretty handy. I'll try to show you how to do that as well But it for someone that hasn't done a lot of Ethernet cabling before um, It can be pretty handy for Ethernet cabling. They actually do have some of the spec uh, Ethernet cabling labeled on the back. You may or may not be able to see that but we're not going to do that today So when you get the serial cable 
Um, again, the chip in here to do RS-232 is in here. And then the cable's just the six pair of cable running in a sheath. And then it's got this end on that we don't need. So we're gonna cut this to length and then we're gonna crimp on the appropriate end with the appropriate pin out. So when you've got your wire out, um, first thing to note is that we're gonna cut it to length, but make sure you cut it um, not exactly to length, always give yourself some play. And the reason I say that is because you have a tendency to cut things too short, typically, um, or if you run into an issue, it's hard to make a cable longer. So one of the problems you can have, especially with some cheaper wire strippers, is that it's possible that when you cut into this sheath to expose the six cables inside, it's possible that you actually cut one or two of those wires, and then you'd actually need to go back a little bit further into the cable. We wanna give ourselves room for that. And while we wanna get rid of as much cable as we can to eliminate the extra weight, to eliminate the uh, opportunity for cable snags, um, it's okay to have a little bit of um, uh, leeway there. So don't worry about that so much. We're gonna do our um, RJ45 uh, end first, right? So our HEQ5. So I wanna give myself a little bit of extra room because these are pass-through connectors um, that came with this particular kit. So because these are pass-through connectors, I'm gonna give myself a couple extra inches. So whatever you needed, go ahead and give yourself three, four inches. Um, extra, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that long. Now to do that, you'll notice here that this closer end, the blade goes all the way down. This one goes short. This one is for stripping um, wires. This one's for cutting all the way through. So make sure you got it in the right spot. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and use this to cut. And they cut very clean, actually, surprisingly clean. Okay, so I've cut my section of cable and I cut it a little bit long um, on purpose. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the stripper here and I'm gonna take that extra part off. Now you bring it down. Um, in these particular strippers here, uh, crimper strippers, what we'll do is bring it all the way down until it releases, um, just before it releases, and we just spin it around maybe twice, and then this should come right off. And we'll notice what we have here is an empty sheath, and then we should have our six wires. Now this is a very specific cable that I will recommend to you. I've used a couple different ones. Uh, this particular cable has some wires that are a little bit thinner that are gonna work appropriately when using the ends we need, especially for the RJ45s, uh, because they are a little, they can be a little di bit difficult to work with. Now the way this works with the RJ45 is that I like to sit it away from me, uh, pointing away with the clip on the bottom pointing away. Now that tells me that on the left is pin one and we're going to pin eight on the right. And if you look at your EQ direct wiring, what we need is black, yellow, and orange for the HEQ5 in pins four, five, and six. So I'm gonna get black, yellow, and I'm gonna grab my orange. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these ends that the kit comes with and I'm gonna slide this down. And again, you're gonna put the small hole on first and we're gonna just slide that down. And we need to make sure we put this on like this first. Otherwise you'll have <laughs> challenges. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and push that down and we'll just sit it on there for now like that. Now, what we need is black, yellow, and orange to be in four, five, and six. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay this, lay these flat side by side, and I need them to be really, really close together, four, five, and six. And then I'm gonna take, I need to give myself a little room here. I'm gonna take my adapter with the clip down, and I'm gonna try to get them in pins four, five, and six. And what I can do is push through adapters are really handy. I can basically push them straight through and they'll slide through. Now what I want to do is I can kind of look up at this here and you probably won't be able to see it, but I want to make sure that I have my first three pins empty. Again, clip away from me. First three pins empty and I do, and then I've got black, 
yellow, and then orange, four, five, and six. And now that I've got that, I'm just gonna bend them over so they don't come out. And I'm gonna take these other wires and I'm just gonna cut them, cut them short. I actually don't need them here. So I'm gonna go cut them off and I'll use again the same cutters. If you have other cutters or clippers or even some scissors, you can certainly use those. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut them short and get them out of the way. And I'm gonna fan them out a little bit um, just so they don't have any opportunity to touch. But they're in their sheath, so it should be fine. And then I'm just gonna take four, five, make sure I'm still in four, five, and six, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna push our cable up in there. So the outer sheath is now pushed up pretty far in there. And it's beyond, if you can look at this here, see if I can get this to focus a little bit without glare. You can see it's up pretty far, as far as it'll go. And then I've got my cables out the end, right? So I've got, again, I'll just double check, clip away, black, yellow, orange, four, five, and six. One, two, three are empty, seven and eight are empty. Okay, if you want, you can actually twist these just so they don't back out on you. And I'm just gonna feed this through and out the other side. Easier said than done, but I'm gonna push it through. And again, what's nice about this particular kit is this is sitting nice and flush and I've got them twisted out the back. And there's actually a cutter here. So when I crimp, I hold down and crimp really hard, you'll notice that the wires fell off. And now I'm crimped into my spot and I've got a nice clean cut. So the excess was cut off and I've got my end now to clean it up. I can just simply pull this up and put this on. And there we go. Now I've got a cut to length EQ direct cable for an HEQ5, right? So really easy to do. No problem, nice and short, ready to test it out. Now, I'm also gonna do the same thing for my AZ GTI. So let's go ahead and open the other one up. And if you remember, I need basically the same length. And again, the cable we don't need this end, so what I'm gonna do is clean up my area, and I'm gonna measure it against my other cable. This is the length I need when I measure it out. I'm gonna cut it a little bit long. I'm gonna just feed this through, and I'm gonna give myself some leeway, right? About that much. I'll cut the end, and then I'll feed it right back in. Strip it around. Comes off nice and neat. Now, for my AZ GTI, we use a different end. It's an RJ12, very similar to the RJ45, but smaller. So this is an RJ12 end pointing away. This is an RJ45. So you can see it's a, it's a much smaller connector, almost like a phone cable. So because these were not pushed through, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them back a good bit. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this off now, the excess of the other cables I don't need. I'll try to find a piece, a small piece of heat shrink that'll work. You don't need to do this. I just think it ties it up a little bit neater. And I want to, just like I put the other sheath on first. I want to get this on now. Again, we take our clip away from us. And this is going to be a little bit more challenging. Unless, of course, you get lucky on the first try. So once you've got it in, we're going to use the 6P option and we're gonna crimp again.
and that should be crimped nice and good. Two, four, and five. I can take my heat shrink now, bring it up around as far up as I can get it, maybe even fit it in there a little bit. You could do this beforehand, and again, this isn't even really necessary, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Tighten it down. Careful not to burn it, just tighten it up. And now we've got a nice, nice clean end on there. And we've got our second cable. Well, I know some of that was difficult to see. Um, you can learn a lot more about crimping. There are several blog articles online. There's many different YouTube videos about using crimpers and some of the other tools. Really what I wanted to show you is that you can make your own EQ Direct cables and more importantly, you can make them to length so that you can have a nice clean rig, right? Have less cable snag. A lot of these cables come in six, eight, 10, 15 foot lengths. And quite often we only need 18 inches, two feet uh, to go from um, our USB hub to our uh, actual mount itself. So again, something else to consider, but you can see these are very, very short and will come in extremely handy. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. Um, again, don't be afraid of the tools. You can practice, you can buy some spare wire, you can use your spare pieces. Uh, but again, it's something we can do to clean up our rigs and, and eliminate cable snags and other problems that can cause us issues in the middle of the night when we're imaging.